All right, so now we're going to discuss polymorphism, which is a really scary sounding word, but um, it's really, really, really not that bad. So um, let's go back to our playpen. All right, now polymorphism is useful because it allows us to treat uh, basically um, things as instances of its superclasses when it's useful. In other words, we can treat reptiles like they're animals. Uh, literally, animal A is equal to a new reptile, right? So what I've done is that I've created like, if you view a variable as like a box to put something in, right? This is a animal box. It holds animal, this variable A is a box that holds all sorts of animals. So it can hold animals, it can hold reptiles, it can hold lizards, it can hold snakes, it can hold any type of animal. It is an animal box. It is a special animal box. So I can put in a reptile and go, uh, you know, I can tell it to move. I can put a lizard in that box. I can put an animal in that box. No errors, right? No problem. But now let's go ahead and create a new reptile, right? R is equal to a new animal. It doesn't work the other way around, right? This is a this R is a reptile box. It stores reptiles only. Now, technically, remember variables in Java. What do they store? They store memory locations. But for the purposes of this exercise, we're just using this metaphor. R reptile R is a box. It creates a box called R, which stores all sorts of reptiles. Now, animals can be reptiles, but it might be elephants. The biggest reptile is a Komodo dragon. Animals get much bigger. The biggest animal is a blue whale. There's no way a blue whale is fitting in a reptile box, even one made for a, for a Komodo dragon, right? Just can't fit all the different types of animals that are possibly there, right? So it's a reptile box. It can hold any type of reptile. It can hold reptiles. It can hold lizards. It can hold a snake because snakes are reptiles, right? A snake is a reptile, so we can store it in a reptile variable. An animal is an animal, so we can store it in an animal variable. A snake is an animal, right? A snake is a reptile. A reptile is an animal, so we can store a snake in an animal variable, OK? All right. So now that leads us to the very interesting question. Let's go ahead and create a lizard here. The classic question in 1068 that we ask, which is, what is the output of move, of a dot move, right? Because um, an animal will move normally, right? But a lizard is going to scurry, right? And reptiles, they, we don't, they don't change how they eat. So what gets printed out? Which one? It's an animal variable, but it's a lizard object. Well, we, so if this is the way you kind of want to view it. Um, well, we've stored an a, a lizard in an animal box. The box is for an animal. What's in the box? It's a lizard. So if we take the lizard out of the box and ask it to move, it's going to move like a lizard, right? Um, in terms of Java, actual Java technicality and technical rules, what it says is basically that it looks is that when we when when you call a method it first checks to see hey is this something an animal can do right is this something an animal can do well all animals can move so this is a valid method call great okay now that since this is since this is a, since this is an animal uh, we figure out what type of animal it is. We figure out what exactly should be run when we get here. Then this is called dynamic binding. So basically, it says that at runtime we're going to figure we're going to find the most well-defined uh, action that the lizard can take. And says, well, lizard has the move method, so we're going to run it. Okay. Now I mentioned that basically that that it's going to do, it's first checks to make sure that is that something a lizard. Can, uh, you know, an animal can do, right? If I create a public void hiss method in the snake, it's just simply just does that, right? Nothing too exciting. 
and I create a snake. Now I call uh, hiss, right? It's going to give me an error. It says, hey, this is an animal. It could be a snake in here, right? Animals don't have the hiss method. We Snakes have the hiss method, but this is an animal. It doesn't have the hiss method. If we, you know, try to use an animal, we, we don't know what kind of animal is in here. It could be a blue whale. Blue whales, I, I don't think they hiss. Ants don't hiss. I, I, I mean, they had those hissing sound effects on nature documentaries, but I don't think they actually hiss. So, you know, we tried that, we'd get an exception. So the way to override that, if that, if you want to override that, is that you can, you know, we can uh, use casting to say, trust me, uh, the snake is, the animal is actually a snake, right? And that will basically tell Java, uh, Java to just ignore it and assume that animal is a snake. That's fine, it'll run like that. But if you're wrong, right, here's what happens. Right, change it to a lizard. Uh, a lizard cannot be cast. It opens the box and says, okay, uh, we're going to try to make it hiss. And it's like, no, that, that just won't work. Okay. So what is the purpose of this other than confusing students? Excellent question. Okay. The answer for this is that when we is that in data structures we are dealing with collections of objects, right? This really doesn't tie into 1068 that well, but it ties really well into 2168 when we deal with collections of objects of different types, right? Uh, the most basic collection we're dealing with is uh, arrays. So let's so assume we have a group, a collection of animals called a zoo, array of animals, and let's go ahead and just make five uh, cages for these animals to put them in or five slots, right? So here's the power of polymorphism. I can add, I can say, okay, in index zero, I want a new animal. Um, Gary the gorilla. I'm just choosing names that start with, uh, you know, that start with the name. New animal with nothing there zoo uh, 2 is equal to new reptile zoo 3 is equal to new lizard and zoo 4 index 4 is equal to new snake right so we've got an array of animals right this is a zoo. It is an array of animals. It has all different types of animals, right? So I can store uh, Gary the gorilla and Andrew inside of index zeros and one because those are because they are animals. So we can put them in an animal array. But I can also put a reptile, a lizard, and a snake in the animal array because they're all animals. Now. Uh, I can go through every single one of, so I can go for index and i is equal to zero, i is less than a zoo dot length. I can get the animal a um, in the zoo. So animal a is equal to a zoo at index i. Get the animal at index i, and I can tell it to move, and I can tell it to eat pizza, right? And now each animal will call the appropriate method. So first, Gary the gorilla moves normally because he's an animal, and Gary the gorilla eats pizza generically because he's an animal. Andrew does the same thing because he's also an animal. Ralph moves normally because we, don't, we didn't really define how reptiles move. They use what, what, what animal has. We overrode the, the method, though, for reptile. So Ralph can eat a pizza with a crunch. So he eats the pizza with a crunch. Liz scurries away, and Lizzie uh, pounces on the pizza and eats it because that's what lizards do. That's how lizards move, and that's how they eat. Sally slithers away, and Sally eats a pizza with a crunch. So that's kind of the use for that. So this last video is just going to be an, uh, an anendum and some 
and basically some interesting tidbits. But you should definitely watch the next video because it's, we're going to go over the for each loop.